Hey everyone, it's Brad Clark again from Rigging Dojo. I just wanted to do a, a quick um, mechanical rig tip. Um, I came across a blog post the other day that has uh, some excellent uh, cool math breakdown of a uh, how to animate a crank and piston. And this is over at Tech Art and Stuff. Um, and uh, Paul Atkinson. So he goes in to explain he had trouble with uh, getting an engine piston to work uh, and here he's got his example and uh, he said um, you know he was having cyclic dependencies and some problems using uh, constraints and then he ended up going for uh, a math driven route so check out this post it has a great breakdown on angles and and uh, and um, you know, understanding how to actually code this exact behavior, uh, he's got some Python examples on his page as well. And then the end result is this motion. Um, so what I wanted to do is give you a, a quick uh, example on how to do this um, without having to go an expression route. So let's go over to Maya real quick. <coughs> So one of the things that, that um, happens when you go to look at mechanical rigging, uh, there are a lot of um, dependencies and, and uh, connections that kind of cause a lot of problems. So here is the, um, the example um, rig. And let's see, you can see the skeleton joints here. I've got a couple different ones for each, um, each piece. Turn off the grid here. Okay, so here we've got uh, some train arms. Okay. Yeah, let me double check that this isn't. Uh, this is rotating correctly. I just want to cover how to set this system up. So it looks pretty complex. There's quite a few interconnected pieces. Everything's moving. Um, here I've got a little penetration. I think I got my uh, my joint axis off here. But again, that's yeah. You know, I wasn't quite as careful as I should have been <laughs> with uh, joint placement. So just be aware that matters, of course. Um, but for this example. Let's talk about the, the interrelationships. So, you know, the, the first example in the basic connection is going to be a simple IK chain. So most of the time you can use aim constraints, but IK is going to give you a, an aim constraint, but it's going to also let you interconnect everything uh, by, you know, you can add twists and, and you can do a little more uh, stuff with an IK chain faster than maybe setting up an aim constraint. Um, so for these these two two joint uh, connections, like here, you can see the pivot would be here, and it's got an arm. Here we've got a skeleton, uh, a two bone chain, and then we can show the IK handle, and you can see that this is just a single IK handle. So um, you know, as it rotates, it's just going to bend and follow along. No big deal. All right. The example he had in his tutorial, and you can see again uh, the same setup here and the same setup here. Okay, so those are all just using a single IK chain to make something that initially looked a little complex uh, all interconnect and link together. Okay, so the the problem that he was having was wanting to um, uh, there we go having a ref refresh issue on my IK chain here. There we go. I just need to be keyframe. Uh, okay, so 
he wanted um, this this piston to basically move in a straight line. And so let's see, how do you do that? Well, the the simple example is again. Let me just draw out a skeleton for you. Okay, so here is our skeleton example. And uh, so initially you think, well, okay, I can use an IK handle from here to here. And maybe I can, I can try to animate that way, but that's going to not really work. So you think, okay, well, maybe I can go from here to here. And now if I rotate this, Okay, we get some of the desired behavior if we keep, you know, if we keyframe it or constrain that IK node. Um, but what when it passes, you can see that it's it's not staying in the same plane, so that doesn't quite work either. Um, even if this one remained flat, so that's that by itself isn't going to work. So the easy solution is. We need this IK handle to follow some the, this node here. So the, we're going to add an IK handle from here to here uh, because that'll give us the bend we need when this rotates, just like his example. Now, the trick, we are going to constrain the IK handle to its uh, parent driving chain. Okay, so I'm going to grab this bone and I'm going to grab it and do a parent constraint. Uh, maintain offset. Uh, not apparent, sorry, position. Or point constraint. Position is a max term. Um, okay, so we can constrain it to there. And now, okay, it's moving, but we don't want it to go up and down. We want it to just move back and forth. Um, so we can break this connection or when you do the constraint you can of course turn that um, axis off so I'm going to break selection break the connection for Y so that means that the constraint will still pull it in Z and X if you needed that uh, but the constraint will not calculate a Y it's not going to lift it up so now when we rotate this actually let's go ahead and uh, <coughs> Add another IK handle on here real quick and we're going to turn off snap and turn on sticky and what this lets me do is pull this out in front of it so that it can't uh, go the end of this chain won't go past it and now that should work okay so now you can see as we rotate our chain we've got the same example the exact same motion happening that he used for his example and uh, without quite the heavy expression which again um, you know for learning purposes and uh, just being able to, to think like a technical director this is awesome um, but you know, th this can be intimidating to people when they go to rig mechanical stuff. So I wanted to show some some examples here of very simple stuff that most people are already familiar with. But I just wanted to show you a creative way to uh, use the limited constraint um, on this by uh, not allowing it to translate in Y. Uh, and then if we look at our our finished example we can see that we have the the train piston here okay so there you go there's the uh, rig tip for creating a mechanical piston driven system 
uh, of course if you need the, the the geometry needs to be long enough to go into this guy <laughs> there we go and now it's staying it's tracking in the same direction and doing what we want The only other thing is just make sure your bones are not drawn all in the uh, yeah, wrong plane. <laughs> As I snap them to the vertices, I, I missed a missed an angle. But for this demo, that should be it. And uh, I hope it gives you guys some ideas on how to use the ability to uh, limit your constraint axes for some more powerful options. All right, that's it. Have a good weekend.